Hello there. My name is Norman D. Norman D. That's Norman with a capital D. D stands for the Demon King. For the Demon's Carrots. Yes. Should it should be? This is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it, it really I didn't is. want any part of this. The, <laughs> this. They said, "Let's start with a song." My name I, is Zippy Westboro just... from the Bramble Patch. You know, <laughs> beautiful. It's beautiful. But really we are uneventful. Very, uneventful. Why didn't I get any lines? Your garbage Ooh. trash. You <laughs> keep putting us in these <laughs> stupid <laughs> predicaments. That's true. How I many brood oils are on this ship, man? Um, well, I'm going to tell you in a second. But first, hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to Cheaper by the Dungeon. Uh, I'm the DM Seth, alongside uh, my musical men, uh, Connor. Well, well, hello, my honey. Hello, my baby. Hello, my ragtime girl. <laughs> uh, Adam. Hi, how's it going? <laughs> what the- I can't follow that. And... Uh, Jacob. Yeah, I'm not even gonna. I hate to both. That. I hate both <laughs> so much. Oh <laughs> it was just so good. Uh, I just thought of Spaceballs when the yeah. alien rips out of the guy's stuff. That oh my gosh, that's one of the best scenes in a movie of all time. The part where they're combing the desert. <laughs> Have you found anything? <laughs> we ain't found shit. <laughs> Use the Schwartz. The sh- I see your Schwartz. Schwartz is as big as mine. <laughs> oh yeah! yeah. <laughs> well, this is a promo for Spaceballs now. Uh, anyways, welcome to Cheaper by the Dungeon movie reviews. Uh, Spaceballs, ten out of ten. Uh, I would legitimately for... dub- love to do a podcast like that. You know, <sighs> yes. My opinions are the best. <laughs> Has anybody seen Far From Home yet? Uh, no, I'm hopefully going to see it. It's tomorrow. out. Yeah, it came out like last night, I think, like at midnight. Oh. Oh man! Spoilers for when we're recording. Everyone knows now. Oh, damn it. Um, the illusion is broken. Anyways, we're a D&D podcast, soon to be movie podcast, probably. <laughs> uh, and a little recap for you about what happened in season two, episode one, last two weeks ago. So the gang arrived in this town called Poker Rock. It's this little village at the base of a mountain. Um, they did a musical number and stunned everybody with their song abilities. Go listen to it. It's like, just skip two minutes in and listen. It's in- It's incredible. Um, it's a full produced song, seriously. All right, after that, they woke up uh, to a brand new day in this new city, uh, and their goal here is to find an airship so that they could, you know, travel the world in search of more clues for this grand treasure they're trying to find. Uh, when they left, they found Valentine and bought a whole slew of just magical items from him that could or could not be cursed, apparently. Uh, and then they left, and then they found Aesop in the mountains of Poker Rock. Uh, Aesop is kind of this kooky old inventor guy uh, who apparently everybody doesn't believe he can make a flying machine but lo and behold he has made an airship Uh, but before the gang could get it and and test it out some brood oils invaded Poker Rock. It seems to be a common occurrence for them. Uh, They had sirens going and they are these flesh lit like fleshy hairless lion beings with bulbous heads with only a mouth and ears on them like holes for ears and they have these long, black, oily tongues that they spread around, and they found out they're weak to fire. After that, they got on the airship and took off to the skies, and then all of a sudden, some noises were happening under, under below the deck, and uh, more brood oils are apparently on the ship. So, guys, roll initiative. Run away. Oh, man. <laughs> I, I jump. You're in the middle of the air right now. <laughs> By the way. <laughs> Oh my freaking gosh. Five. Nineteen. Wow. No. Six. Six. There you go. Fifteen. What'd you get, Zippy? Fifteen. Fifteen? Thundercats are okay. on the loose. Thundercats. Oh, wait, how many are there? I haven't said yet. Ooh. This is so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we'll save we'll save this ship, okay? okay You'll I'm literally okay. gonna light these things on fire because it's the only thing I know what to do, how to handle. No, these no, 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 no! Don't. There goes our <laughs> ship, and oh, there shoot. goes the season. <laughs> if we don't get the ship, then what's this all been for? <laughs> we'll we'll get a land train. No, we're gonna win. We're gonna fight these things and win. All right. So, 
Aesop has just run onto the top deck where all of you are uh, currently stationed. Uh, Norman and Darian, you're kind of just on the deck uh, at the front of the ship. And uh, Zippy, you are at the wheel driving. Uh, Aesop runs up and is throwing up, saying there's brood oils everywhere. And is also like, uh, 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 guys, we need to go down there uh, or, or something. Uh, Darian, run down there quick. Uh, Norman, please. Zippy, just hold on to the wheel. Uh. I only saw two of them, but be careful! All right, Norman, back me up. And I uh, start heading down uh, the stairs. I draw my bow, and I say, sure thing. And I start following, maybe like five, ten feet behind. Okay. Uh, so you guys go down, and the initiative order is starting here. So, Darian, you are up first, and you have just headed below deck with Normandy in tow. You see... Lots of pipes and steam just pumping out of random valves. It's very steampunky, and it just seems like a very like an engine room. Um, and you see uh, two brood oils down here, one near the near the back, and one closer to you. Um, the one close to you is about ten feet away, uh, and they are just like clawing at the stuff down here, just tearing apart some of the engine bits and valves and things. And steam is kind of blowing out of them. So, what would you like to do? Um, I'm going to quickly turn to Norman uh, and just say, Close quarters isn't going to be a good call with these. We need to get them up top. Uh, And I'm going to draw my bow, and I'm going to uh, take a shot at each of them in an attempt uh, attempt to aggro them. Okay, go for it. Sick. Uh, That's not great. That's an eight on the first one. That does not hit. Plus all your stuff? Uh, yeah, it was a, I, I rolled like a three, so it was, it was fine. Um, oh, Dar- Normandy just shakes his head while he watches Darian just shoot the wall. Okay, okay. well, this this <laughs> one's a 15. Uh, 15 does hit. So that's going to be for the one okay. in the back. Uh, so I'm going to roll damage on that. Uh, that's going to be 11 damage just on that one. Uh, and then at the same time, I'm going to start screaming out like, Oh, come off. Come on, you stupid slick sons of bitches. Come over here. And I'm going to use my movement and uh, start running back up the steps. Ow, watch it, Darian. You better move. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you bump through uh, Norman running up the steps back to the top deck. Uh, you didn't go anywhere like in the below deck, so you made it up with your movement. Uh, the one that you hit with the arrow is kind of flailing about and just lets out a scream. And the one that was closer to you also lets out a scream. Like, they're kind of in a pack mentality. Um, the the one close closest to you starts chasing after you and runs into Norman uh, on the stairs. Dang it. Uh, and and uh, they, yeah, they're, they're blind, but... They don't have eyes, and they're just gonna run into you and start clawing at the nearest thing to them, which is Norman. <laughs> so get ready. That's great. Perfect. Bring it on. What is your AC, Norman D? Okay, it's fourteen. Yeah, it's gonna hit. Ugh, of course. So, uh, so on the brood oils, there are these flesh line beings, like I said, but they also have these two long, um, like human arms and claw hands, just arcing off their back. And they're going to claw at you as they're running up the stairs. And you are going to take 17,000 damage. (laughs) I'm kidding. No. (laughs) No. Uh, You're going to take nine damage. Okay. And it's also going to attack again. Come on. Both of them are going to attack. Break me. No, it's the same one. They get two attacks each. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Natural 20. (laughs) Rough start. Hello. My name was Norman. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, that's only going to be 12. You got off lucky. So the one arm comes down, slashes across your chest, and grabs your shirt while clawing. And the other arm comes around and just bops you in the face. Uh, uh. Um, So you take that much damage. So 12 damage on the second hit. Okay. All All right. right. Uh, So, Norman, you are locked in combat with that one. Uh, The one in the back is freaking out and it's kind of like a maze down there in very tight quarters so when it, it's freaking out it's, it doesn't know where else to go but up so the brood oil climbs and claws through the ceiling in the below deck and lands on the top deck um, Zippy you can see it through the windows of kind of the, the steering wheel room uh, picture it like it's a pirate ship and where the wheel is it's kind of just an enclosed space with like windows all around um, it's just to protect from the elements when you're flying through the sky. 
um, but it is on the top deck uh, here and is about 20 feet away from you, Darian, and is going to pounce. Uh, Darian, you need to make a uh, strength saving throw. Okay. Uh, that's a 21 on my strength saving throw. Okay. The, um, the brood oil pounces across the top deck towards you, uh, Darian, and you, it, like, grabs onto you, and you do not fall over. Instead, you grapple with it and throw it back, and, um, you just get a little bit of oil on you because its tongue was flailing at you as it was pouncing. Did it go over the edge of the ship? Uh, no. What? That's that's so stupid, (laughs) Deanne. Why didn't it do that? Why didn't you just suplex it, Darian? (laughs) Um, but no, you pushed it back, uh, and now it is just, uh, knocked prone itself, actually. Um, so it is, it is on its back after being thrown, and it uses its last action just to get back on its feet. Uh, so now we're going to go to Zippy. So you're in this enclosed little steering wheel, uh, place in the airship, and you can see below on the front deck, uh, the brood oil and Darian. And you can see in the corner of your eye the stairways leading down to the, bo- the bottom deck and you can see Normandy uh, hugging it out with another brood oil. I can, I can picture this perfectly. How, what's the, how close is the closest uh, brood oil to me? Uh, now, it's about, because of where it jumped and where you guys were, it's about 15 feet from you, Zippy. I'm going to increase the uh, altitude of this ship and just like <laughs> put it in a, like point it up so it keeps going as high as possible. Oh, oh jeez. Oh, man. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, so I crank the lever back. I'm a little bit short, but I, I look down the, the stairway to where I can see Darian and I give him a thumbs up. <laughs> Darian looks back and gives another thumbs up. But then at the same time, uh, I cast Animal Friendship on uh, the f- one that's 15 feet away from me. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, I'll let your, your ship movement be your movement when yeah. you're steering. Um, so you crank this lever, <laughs> and it is... Uh, you can see the balloons are kind of expanding, and you can hear some of the pipes are kind of bursting even more because of this now added pressure to them. Uh, and you're really kind of straining the system to kind of gain altitude at an even faster rate than, you know, normal. So you're doing it, and it's floating. And normally it goes up at a, at a smooth incline, but you're trying to crank it at a steep incline, am I correct? Yeah. Okay, yeah, you're, you're cranking it. And like, um, like you know how it fares, the, the boat carnival ride, how it, like, swings? It's kind of starting to swing upward until it's kind of perfectly vertical, but it's not quite there cool. yet. Yeah, I'd say it. it's at, like, a... A 75 degree angle, you see it's starting to pull up. Darian and Norman make a deck saving throw. Of course. Okay. Uh, that's a 20, not natural for me. That's a 7 for me. Um, what the heck, man? Get new dice. Man, this is a new dice. Oh my god, I am gonna use my. Wow. Okay. Um, Wait. Uh, how many creatures are close to me right now? Within thirty feet. Just the one. Uh, just uh, actually, the other one would be probably within thirty feet as well. Yeah. Okay. Then I'm gonna make this a level two spell and cast on both of them. Oh wow. Okay. You are arcing this thing up, and it is it is climbing and climbing. And Darian, with your twenty. Was that nat 20, or was it just 20 with bonuses? Okay. Uh, You just kind of uh, notice the inclines happening, uh, and you just grab onto one of the planks uh, of the top deck, and and you're just kind of standing there uh, holding on uh, to to the planks because they're a little bit loose now. Um, So you're you're fine, and you're kind of at the top deck. Normandy... As well as the two brood oils failed, <laughs> and they, as it's inclining, they're sliding and eventually just tumbling down, and they're just face planting. All three of them face plant on the window glass in front Can of I Zippy. Can I try and use my reaction to catch Norman? Sure, go for Darian! it. Darian! Oh, 
Um, hold on. What, what should I, what bonuses should I add for this, uh, to catch up? Strength? I'm gonna say, yeah, just, yeah, just strength. Uh, that's an 18. Okay, um. Bless you, man. <laughs> Look, I do combat real good. <laughs> that's the one thing I do really well. Okay, so, <laughs> the, the two brood oils, uh, fall out alongside Normandy, and Darien, a little flavor text, you kind of face step really quickly and teleport just over there, oh my God, that's grab so him, sick. and grab onto a railing, and you're just holding the railing and Normandy, like, Spider-Man style, just one in each arm, and just, you're the, the tether between the two, but you've saved Normandy from falling. The two Brutals roll down and face plant on the window in front of you, Zippy, and you just look at them and smile and give the old spell, Animal Friendship a Whirl. Um, so, they must be able to see and hear you for this uh, spell to work, and luckily the glass is thin and, and your words could pass to them. Um, so what is your spell save DC? Because they need to do a wisdom saving throw. Right. So it's 13. Um, okay, <laughs> both of them are... are are befriended by Zippy. Yay! For 24 <laughs> <Yeah>. hours! <laughs> for, for 24 hours. Uh, <laughs> however, I will say, if you or one of your companions harm them, the spell ends. What if, well, what if, like, what if they, like, tumble from, like, this ship going back into normal gear? Like, is that my, is that take them out of it? Yeah, kind of, well... What? How am I supposed to get no, out of this? No, 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 it, it's, it's just you guys. Like, okay. It has to be friend you guys. Like, yeah, if they it can took, hate the if ship you, all If you all told, all if befriended a beast and then you're like, go fight for me, it would fight. But it, it's like, if you stab it in the back, it's going to be like, well, yo, what the hell? If I understand that spell correctly, I don't think it means we're friends with it. I think that just means Zippy's friends with it. That is so. exactly <laughs> right. That's what I was getting to. Uh, so Zippy, you're friends with the beast. They are not friends with Normandy or Darien. Um, but if you or one of your companions, any of you, harm it, then uh, then there you go. It'll be it'll be a, a bit of a bad time. Okay. Um. So it is at a steep incline. Uh, Normandy, it is your turn. Currently, you are being held up by Darien, and you're at this steep incline on this airship that is climbing and oh climbing higher into the sky. And is it like open air beneath my feet? Uh, yeah, like, if you fell, you would land on the front glass, um, because it's still at, like, an 80-degree incline. Okay. Uh, but just past that, yeah, it's open air. Oh, my gosh. I just got, like, lightheaded just thinking about <laughs> that. Okay, so, um, how far is my fall between me and the glass? Um, your fall between you and the glass? Yeah. About 15, 15 feet, yeah. Okay. If you hurt the two, this is going to be all for nothing. Okay, but yeah, but I don't necessarily know that you cast that spell. Because I'm, like, literally hanging for my life. First of all, I'm going to say, Darian, I so owe you one, man. I really appreciate this. Uh, and then I'm going to start singing to myself, I'm not going to stop. Not going to stop till I get my shot. That is who I am. That is my plan. Will I make it out on top? You can bet on it. And I'm going to cast Bane on the two brood oils. Uh, yeah, I can... Okay, so... Up to three creatures of your choice that you can see within range, which is 30 feet, must make charisma saving throws. Whenever a target that fails a saving throw makes an attack roll or a saving throw before the spell ends, which is up to one minute, the target must roll a d4 and subtract the number of roll from the attack roll or saving throw. But it's not an attack, so it shouldn't trigger their... It shouldn't make them angry. Okay. Yeah, you're right. All right, so what's the spell save DC for you, Norman? 15. One of them saves. The injured one? Uh, the other one fails. The one that the the one that was shot, or like which one saved? The injured one or the the one that was with you, uh, Norman, is the one that saved. So the injured one is the one that has failed. Okay. Um, so he's really hurting. So the one that was fighting Darian and that got shot in the face with an arrow has uh, failed and is now under the effects of Bane. The one that was with you, it's all good to go. Ugh. Okay. And I mean, is there anything I can do to? Like, with my movement, can I try to climb up Darien to get to the railing, or what? Yeah, I'll, I'll allow that. I think Darien, with his massive biceps <laughs> and the good roll he had for strength saving, 
uh, he could just like help you lift you up to grab the railing as well. Thank you, Darian. Oh, you're welcome. Um, was that Bane? <laughs> uh, yeah. What do you think? I think that's perfect. You're perfect. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back to uh, Darian. So it's knowing that it's Bane, um, and we're at an, we're at an eighty percent, so it's steep, but I can still kind of slide. Um, so yeah, now that slide. Norman is safe, I'm going to try and control slide down onto the glass. Not fast enough that I'm going to shatter through it, but like control slide to get down so I'm on the glass with the two brood oils. And uh, mm-hmm. seeing that it's open air behind them, I'm going to reach to my hip and pull off my wind fan and go, this is a perfect opportunity to try this out. Whip it open yes. and gust of wind both of them. <laughs> okay. Um, you got it. Okay. Uh, they are going to have to make a save. Uh, they have to make a strength save, I believe. Woo! Bane coming in clutch. <laughs> yes. Oh man, can you give us the numbers on that? I guess you can't. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Uh. <laughs> Uh, if you really want numbers, uh, with the minus eight, that was a five, and the other one got a nat one. <laughs> yes. So, my God. Okay, <laughs> you land on the glass, and you um, take out the fan. You want to say anything cool before you flan- fan it? Uh, <laughs> shoot, I wasn't ready. <laughs> um, this is your moment. No, I got. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Up from the railing, I shout, Hasta la vista, baby! <laughs> what does that even mean? And then I whip the fan. <laughs> All right. And a huge gust of wind flows horizontally towards them. You see the one brood oil with the arrow in its head, and its claws are digging into the glass, and it's just slowly scraping by, uh, and it's clawing at it, and scratches are made into the glass. But it, its grip is not tight enough, and it flies off due to the wind. And the other one, literally, it was just caught off guard, and it goes flying far, and it bonks its head on a railing as it goes by and takes damage and just corkscrew spins away uh, off into the open air and down towards the earth at a very fast rate. Oh, no, boy! (laughs) You have uh, successfully ruined uh, these two brood oils' lives, and you are out of combat. Congratulations. We did it! Zippy, yes. tip the ship back over, please. I think it's stuck. So- <laughs> it is stuck. <laughs> it's stuck. You are constantly going up, but you notice you're go- climbing slower and oh, slower. Zippy, Zippy, unstick it. I can't. Okay, I'm going to use mage hand from where I am up on the railing. Uh, if it's if the hand if the lever is within thirty feet of me, I'm going to use mage hand to try to straighten the lever to level us out. Okay, I'm gonna make you make a uh, a wisdom check. Man, my checks suck. Eleven. You try with all your magical might to make this hand pull this lever, but it is not sufficient enough to pull this ten. It's more than ten pounds to pull this lever uh, at the point it's at now, so it is not able to. But it's trying, and you, all of you, feel. It's starting to get a little weightless. Oh my gosh! And 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 you feel your gut, your your gut just sink, and you float up a little bit as you're you kind of glide above the airship for a second, and then it starts diving down. It it's stalled by climbing so high. It it's, stalled? It's, you mean the wind creatures just gave up? <laughs> they, they took a coffee break. Well, well, the pipes are damaged. Yeah, but the and wind then, the wind pe- things are the ones making this thing fly. Yeah, 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 I'll get to that. <laughs> You're climbing, and then it stalls, and the vertical velocity you need to like push forward stops, and you start diving down. It arcs forward and dives down. Um, Aesop yells at you, Zippy. Hey, here, take this! Take this last air! And he throws you a little vial, this this little blue vial of of, um, of juice that he, he uh, told you guys about before, which is supposed to be tossed into the balloon chambers to give, you know, an extra burst of, of speed. Um, and he just says, 
Throw this in! There's a valve and a little flap right near the steering wheel. Just throw it in and, and, and pray for the best! Hold on! But what if I don't? <laughs> <laughs> So if you want, you can have a choice here. Uh, obviously, you always have a choice. You could do nothing. You could toss it in. You could steer right. You could steer left. You could steer straight. Um, you do nothing. Yeah, I throw it off, off the, out the window. <laughs> you throw it out the window? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. You throw it out the window. He Aesop gives you this vial. You op- run over to the side window as you're diving, and you kind of stumble your way over, and you take this and just chuck it out the window. All right. Zippy, what the hell are you doing? The way, <laughs> the way I see it is that if we're going to make this ship our own and and the this train conductor here, the ship conductor, gets us to use his ship and, you know, these creatures can trust us, the ones who are flying, we have to do this do this the right way, not through any steroids, which is what I'm pretty sure that was. But your pills <laughs> that you sell are steroids. That, that wasn't steroids. <laughs> they, they were tired. That was supposed to give them a boost I of energy. Use... In the midst of falling, <laughs> I use my bunny legs to hop up close to one of the balloons. Okay. And then Which balloon, left or right? The left one. Okay. <laughs> and then I, uh, I I touch the balloon and I say, hello in there. So you've gone outside. It's, it's starting to dive at a fast rate. It's falling. Um... And you've kind of worked your way over to the to the balloon side, and you're trying to talk to them, and and all you hear is just whoosh, it's just rushing air. It's you you can't hear any uh, voices, nor could you speak the language. So I um I I turn to Aesop because Zippy's walked away or jumped away. I turn to Aesop and say, "Grab the wheel and get ready." And I run over to the balloon with uh with Zippy and go, "It's okay, I can translate. I know primordial, freaking wild. I know." I- <laughs> I, <laughs> and I, so I start talking in primordial um, to the air elemental, and I go, "Look, I don't know your name or, or how you ended up in there, but I can tell you this: we're all about to die unless you do something. So I really need you to just get it together and just give us one big push." No, no, no! I, I'm gonna bestow them a gift. You can tell them that. Oh, I. Okay. We don't need any medicinal big pharma stuff around here, Mister Mister. Uh, Mr. Airship Conductor, I know what you were trying it's to do. Pilot. These poor Stop creatures. Call- it's a pilot. Okay. What are you giving them? We're falling so, right now. These poor, poor creatures. All of a sudden, white. You are falling through the clouds. You can see again. You are through the the bottom layer of clouds, and you see the ground. Fast Zippy, give okay, them. Seth. Give it Normandy. to Seth. <laughs> can, I, can I, oh, I use... Uh, Wait, my, no, Normandy had something to say. Okay. From where I am, up on the rail still, the the yeah. balloons, how far are they away from me? You're closer to the right one uh, than the left one, but the left one would be about 25 feet away from you. Okay. Where, where uh, they're Whichever at. Whichever one they're not at, uh, nor, uh, Darian and Zippy, I'm going to cast Dissonant Whispers. You whisper a discordant melody that only one creature of your choice within range can hear, racking it with terrible pain. It must make a wisdom saving throw on a failed save. It takes 3d6 psychic damage and must immediately... Use this reaction, if available, to move as far as We're at trying its speed to befriend these things. Allows Why? it away. So it, it's going to try to move. It's going to try and run away. Okay. So, all right. What the what save do I have to make again? Uh, wisdom? Yeah, it's wisdom, DC 15. And I'm going to whisper just out loud. I'm going to say, with the power of Royce and Salem, help me. And I'm going to cast it. So one of the air elementals, there's two in each balloon. One of them failed, the one you targeted, and you just hear lots of more rushing winds and some faint, airy screams. It starts knocking itself into the side, trying to escape away from you, and you feel the ship start to kind of turn while falling to the right, and it's starting to shift. Uh, Zippy, what would you like to do? Um, I ask uh, Darian to hold on to me. Okay. <laughs> uh oh. And I hope he has a good grip on something. Uh, I grab the deck, I guess. I grab a railing. And then I cut open the balloon <gasps> with one of my daggers. And then I reach inside and I I try to grab hold onto whatever mist there is in there. That's obviously a a piece of the actual creature. And then I cast enhance ability on it. 
and uh, tell Darian to to tell them that this is a gift from us to them. Uh, yeah, I <laughs> I relay that to them. I'm telling I'm telling Darian to hold on to it because I imagine just by even opening this balloon here that it's gonna do a lot of wind. You cut into the to the um, the balloon, the left side balloon, and make a quick gash and just reach in your furry little hand to give some creature in there enhanced ability. And you feel wind just pour out, but you do feel that it was accepted, whatever the enhanced ability was. But wind is gushing out right in both of your faces. I use mend. Mm. So Zippy, you make a deck save, and uh, Darian, you make a strength save to, to see if, if you can hold on to Zippy real tight. Uh, 17. You hold on real tight. Mine is a 14. You grab onto the railing right behind you, and uh, you made it, but your ears are just flopping in the wind <laughs> real fast, and, and you got knocked bit, a bit back. What would you like to do? Now I want to mend the air balloon that I just cut open. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you reach over, Amazing. mend it up real good, uh, and the balloon is fixed. And filling with air. And you can feel it's slowing down because of the increased just volume in there and their their newfound energy. Um, and it is starting to float. It's still a little off balance. And with the one scared air elemental on the right, just pulling it towards the right, you're kind of <laughs> turning in this arc. And you're turning away from the mountains at this point. And you can see actually the ground area that you're going into is just north of Pokerok. It's that place with all the geysers uh, based off the way you guys were turning. And you guys are getting closer and closer to the ground and you are seeing geysers go up. These large columns of water just go up left and right of you and you're just kind of navigating your way through and luckily dodging all these geysers that are just like exploding. And one blasts in front of you and you all go through it and get covered in this hot water it doesn't burn you but you you just get soaked flying through and the airship kind of hits the ground once hits it twice and then slides to a halt relatively undamaged <sighs> but now we have like a devil on one shoulder angel on the other situation going on next time <laughs> <laughs> next time let's just use the vial <sighs> no, we ha- we have to big risks require risks require big cool moves like what I just did. Aesop comes out of the cat like the 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 wheel room and just throws up <laughs> <laughs> on the deck. The brood oils, all of this, it did not sit well with him, and he's just like, I cannot believe we're alive. Oh, why did you throw that out the window? <laughs> Wasn't uh, what did I show you that I'm worthy of being the ship's captain? Yeah, I guess, man. You have a way with those guys. Damn. Hell yeah, I do. You... <laughs> Seth, is the um, is the air elemental in the right side still freaking out? I guess I f- it only lasts. Make an investigation check. Okay. Um, eighteen. You look over the edge, and you see a slit. Uh, the right balloon was cut in the landing. No. Uh, and you don't notice any air elementals in the right balloon anymore. Eee, how am I going to tell the guys? Um, all right. Okay. Wow. Guys, Darian, can you help me get down? Oh, wait. Have, has the ship leveled itself out by now? It's It's come to a halt. And the area around you, it's never been named, but it looks just like a desolate desolate rocky landscape uh no signs of life anywhere just these geysers that go into the clouds above and it's very kind of foggy and steamy um but you don't see yourself anywhere of note i climb down as best i can to join darian and zippy you do so guys we we survived i i don't believe it i i thought we were just gonna free fall to our deaths but for some reason the ship seemed to level itself out at the end and and we're alive we did it that was, uh, yeah, a little too close for comfort on that one. I 
Wait, Aesop, where, where are we? Uh, I, I don't really know. I, no one really goes here. I, if I had to guess, we're just north of Pokerock in in these lands. Yeah, I, I, I can't really say for sure where exactly we are, but when falling, I got a glimpse, and yeah, we're we're just north of the mountains. This is crazy, <sighs> crazy awesome. A whole new adventure could happen here. There's some look at these geysers all over the place. <laughs> can we, before we get too excited... One goes off. Before we get too excited, can we just do a quick uh, inspection of the ship and see what kind of damage is done? Yes, let's do that ASAP. So, uh, Darian, you and Aesop kind of lead the inspection of the ship since you're qu- quite good with just, you know, technology and gear. I always needed um, a good engineer. That's what I said. <laughs> uh yeah with darian you know you know what's what's up kind of or you can very quickly grasp what's going on with the ship and how it works maybe you can um, maybe you can make some of your fey cool gear stuff on this ship that'd be real cool instead of just putting it in your soul yeah if uh as long as the ship still works so you both go down into the engine room and you see some of the pipes are broken and snapped off some of them are covered in oil uh, claw marks at certain places, but you both assess that minimal damage was done because you guys dealt with the pro- the problem and got them out of there really quick. Um, so he has some spare pipes and he has some tools, some wrenches and hoosboogles, as I've mentioned <laughs> before, that can uh, that can thoroughly fix the ship um, without any issue. Uh, but you do an outside inspection, you see kind of the the hull of the ship is a little damaged and you notice the right balloon has a slit where air elementals have escaped from what what happened to you <laughs> oh well it looks like uh the the right uh air pocket was ripped upon landing that's that's so unfortunate and crazy how how did this happen uh, this why would it just leave like that? Well, you saw it yourself, Zippy. We were turning and caught in a windstorm, all these geysers everywhere. It's it's impossible that we weren't damaged uh, at all. You, you know what I'm saying? It's We are quite fortunate, I'd say. This is terrible. How We're trapped here now. Aesop, quick, uh, were the air elementals, were they imprisoned in there? Was it more of a bargain? Um, w- well, if... Imprisoned's a harsh <laughs> word, I think. Were they forcibly um, restrained inside the balloon? If you want to say I purchased them from a slaver, then yes. Hmm. But has this ever <laughs> happened before? No, because I never opened the balloons! Wait a minute, wait a minute. We, we may not be totally screwed. You said that there's two air elementals on each side, right? What if we... What if we just channeled somehow one of the air elementals from the left side to the right side once we mend it with Zippy's amazing abilities, and then we could just kind of, at like, half power, kind of just, like, hover along back to Poker Rock? We can't just have one side on and one off. We just turn left the whole time. No, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying if we could somehow get one of them into the other one so we have, like, half capacity. If we had half capacity, you're right. We'd only be able to float a little bit off the ground. We wouldn't be able to gain much more than 20 feet of altitude. But that's fine, as as long as we're moving. But how the hell are we going to get one of the air elementals from the right onto the left? Or vice versa, sorry. Left onto the right. Are they people? Uh, well, they're elementals. <laughs> that's... They're not... They're, but are they... they... They have personalities, yes. They can make conversation. Are they sentient enough to be, a, like, to consider themselves persons? Yeah, they they have an to identity. To be honest, I, I never really tried to talk to them. I just kind of bought them and shoved them in there. A um, little bit of regret on that right now. Well, but well, let's see. Um, I've talked to I've talked to elementals before. They they have a, a identity. They they know who they are. It's a weird kind of collective, but they they can identify themselves. They do have wants and desires. We could communicate with it and talk with it, but in some cases they can be crafty, and if they can escape as easily as the other one, you know, unless we have a foolproof way of moving an air mental from one side to the other, there's a good chance this one's just going to to abandon ship as well. 
I kind of lower my voice, and I say, can they hear us now, Aesop? Um, probably. Oh, oh, wait. Look! And he points off into the distance, and you see an air elemental, just one of them, rushing back towards you and the gang. And that's where we're going to take a break. Hello there, my name is DM Seth. That's Seth with the capital S. Yes, I know I'm a lot like you. I have three players that ruined my campaign too. There we go. That's my song. That's my version. Uh, The line that never got added. (laughs) Well, anyways, thank you everybody for listening up to this point. This is the mid-roll. This is where we do announcements and junk. And I just have a few for you today. First off, if you like the show, consider following us on the social medias. We have a Twitter, at Cheaper Dungeon. We have a Facebook. Just type in Cheaper by the Dungeon. We have an Instagram, Cheaper underscore Dungeon. We have all that fun stuff, and you can stay there to keep updated with our show and, and when next episodes are coming out or other fun stuff we're doing. Maybe live stream soon of Smash Bros? We'll see. I have a mean Yoshi. Just letting you know. Um, other news, uh, not much, but... We do have a promo clip. This clip is provided from the wonderful D&D podcast, The Session Tapes. Take a listen. In the Witchgrave Covenant, like many other fantasy realms, it's the heroes that save the day. Slaying dragons, rescuing villages, delving dungeons. They're the people you go to when evil is afoot in the land. Ever wonder what happens when those heroes aren't around? Sometimes, when sinister forces are at work, the only people you've got to call on are the town doctor. I'm not gonna lie to you, this is going to hurt. That crazy lady who raises mules. You have to be glossy at all times. (laughs) And the gnome kid that runs the dispensary. You know Big Milo down at Newbridge? He's got mules as well. That's right. It's time for the NPCs to step up and save the day. I think I killed some. I did kill some. <laughs> <laughs> you were healing trauma on one of the most renowned highwaymen in the area. Also true, but... Ain't no mule, that's a donkey. What? Or maybe they'll just make everything worse. The Session Tapes, Children of the Covenant. Fridays at www.thesessiontapes.com. Also available on iTunes, Thank you so Spotify, much, you guys, Google Podcasts, uh, or for, wherever you, you know, get your podcasts. Giving us a promo to play uh, and playing one on your show. Check out their show if you want to hear our promo soon. Um, but thank you again, guys. We really appreciate it. Uh, other news. Um, next episode, very important. Season 2, episode 3, is coming out. Calendar. You think, you think I should know this off the top of my head. July 23rd. 2019 this year this year in two weeks what yes it is coming out then um other than that we just hope you're enjoying our show it's been a blast to make and we're gonna keep going into this adventure we're gonna find some treasure (gasps) but wait oh i almost forgot i have to shout out a very special person jacob goudreau basically the cheaper by the dungeon like composer he does so much of our music for the show and it is incredibly useful and we he the show wouldn't be what it is without his contributions as well so uh thank you jacob you are a superstar now enough stalling let's get back to the episode hope you like it and we're back And an air elemental, one of the two, is moving its way quickly back to the airship. Uh, And it looks like it's in a kind of a panic state. And it comes up to all of you. And an air elemental, basically, it has this humanoid man kind of top half. But the bottom half is all like a tornado. Kind of like Tasmanian Devil comes to a point on the ground. But they're floating and they're all just kind of like a gust of wind. And they're very kind of see-through. But you can make out the base figure. Do you think this proves Uh, that there's a god? I mean, why else would these things go in a humanoid, uh, be in a humanoid, uh, you know, <laughs> way? It doesn't mean that humans are the most favored of all the creatures. That makes me feel a little sad. I, it's, it's a humanoid, Zip. That means, like, you could be a humanoid. 
Like, there's, that's a very broad term. But he looks like a man. Uh, Is it at us now? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, okay. I'll just it leave that one then. Just arrived at you, <laughs> and it goes up to Aesop and just kind of starts shaking him back and forth, and it's just kind of all most of you hear just like rushing wind and and little just weird bits of of wind and storm. But Darian, you hear because you can understand their language. He's like, please, 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 please. They left. They left. We need to get them back. What are we doing? What? Understand me. Somebody understand me. Uh, I reply to it in primordial and I go, I. I understand what you're saying. What do you mean they left? <laughs> Darian, what's happening? Who are you? They're, he's he's panicking about something. Something someone left. I don't. You I deal don't with it. Look, we're we're travelers here, friends of friends of Aesop. We're we're trying to help and hopefully uh, use the ship. What what's going on? Oh, thank goodness one of you knows. My brother left. They, he, he ran away. He was damaged. He was scared. He went off. We need to get him back or else, you know, I don't know. We'll be exposed to the elements, which is scary. The, You're okay, exposing yes. your elements right now, am I? <laughs> what? Oh, my Oh, no. <laughs> Put on a shirt. Or oh, I just want to go back in the balloon. Put on a shirt or something. You, you're scaring me. Are you? Uh, you see the air <laughs> elemental, like, flexes and then, like... Over top of their air, like shape, like a t-shirt shape goes around them. Like it looks like they're kind of clothed now. But and uh, okay, but currently they don't understand. I'm the only one that understands them, correct? Well, let's pretend that he can, uh, we, he can understand everyone, three, but they it. just can't understand him. Oh, okay. But yeah, Darian, you're kind of the like translator for him to them. Okay. Um, yeah. So I guess we'll we'll just assume from here on out that I'll just tra- like translate everything he says. Auto translate. Yeah. P- please, please, we need to get him back. And, oh, I just want to go back in the balloon. He kind of, they go really thin and just kind of breeze in because they can fit in such small spaces and they kind of breeze into the balloon and they're just kind of peering out of the little slit in the balloon. They're just like, oh, that's better. Yes, uh, yes. You're, but the balloon is your safe space. <laughs> this is where yes, you belong. The world is scary. The world is dangerous. Super scary. Yes, you belong in our ship balloon right there. <laughs> All right, Zip, he's, he's scared enough. Just Give him a minute. Darian, what's his name? <laughs> look. Look. What, um... What is yours and your brother's names? What should we call you? My name is Cain. And my brother's name is Hurry. Hurry? Oh, I get yes. it. Ha ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. It's not a oh. joke. We thought it was funny. We named ourselves. Nobody oh. names air elementals. We had to, we were bored in here, and we came up with names for each other. Okay, we thought it was clever. No, I get, I get it, I get it. All right, where, where did, where did your brother go? He, that, that way, a, a, a cave nearby. I could lead you over there, but I gotta get back to the balloon real quick. Well, we, well, we need you to come with us. I think if your brother sees you, he's gonna feel more trusting. You, you said he's scared. No, 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 Aesop, give him, give him the cup, give him the cup. Uh, and you translate that to Aesop, and he's just like, oh, right. Um, yeah, I can't believe I forgot about that. That would have been useful when we were falling if I used that instead, but, uh, okay, uh, one moment, and Aesop goes into the ship and brings out this chalice. Um, specifically, it's called a sensor of controlling air elementals. Mm. Um, it's a little chalice with incense in it, and when you burn it and speak the command word, um, it, you basically take control of the air elementals around you. Uh, you have to be pretty close, though, and make them kind of smell it to get them under your control. But once you light the incense in the chalice, put it up close to the air elemental, they'll be under your control, and you can, like, you know, right. tell them what to do and where to go. Give so it, what's it called it. again? The chalice of what? The sensor of controlling air elementals. Give it to give it to Norman D. He's the only one who didn't, you know, screw up this whole air and air <laughs> elemental situation. <laughs> It must have been me and Darian who just, you know, we were being a bit too reckless out there. I apologize, everyone. Well, you you Look, can't beat yourself up just... too much, Zip. And and Darian, you guys tried your best, but I'd, I'd be honored. Um, <laughs> so it has a five feet range, so you just got to get it five Ooh. feet within them, and then they'll kind of get under the effects of the incense. Aesop, I assume you'll want to stay here to watch the ship. Well, I think, well, given the situation... We're going to need all four to get out of here, at least fly, and for you guys to use the ship 
anywhere else outside of this. And it's going to be hard to get any more air elementals. So this is our best bet. So you guys search for hurry. And I will do repairs on the ship. Uh, so that it's ready when you guys come back. Thank you very much. Okay, perfect. Kane, can you lead us to your brother? Yes, yes, I can. Well, let's let's go quick. And he slides out of the balloon. He's like, oh, so cold. And the t-shirt turns into a hoodie. <laughs> um, <laughs> and he like flips the hood up. And he's like, okay, let's go. And you guys follow him through this desolate land. Um, as you're walking, just casual little geysers are going up around you. And then you see a big one, just a, a wall of water going off in the distance. And every time one of them goes off, uh, Kane kind of just like shudders. He's like, oh, I hate this. I hate it. Balloon is safe. Balloon is warm. Kane, what, what makes you hate this place so much? Do you have a weakness to water? Is that what's going on? No, I just, uh... All of us, all four of us hate the elements for the most part. I don't know. We were captured very young and treated poorly. But then, you know, we were sold to Aesop and at least it was safe there. We don't like ent- exiting the world anymore. We, it's dangerous. People hurt us. You've been tamed, I see. I'd rather say domesticated, but okay. Um, Is there like a geyser close by? Like we're walking? Uh, yeah, there is. Okay. Uh, Like for me to easily just sidestep and like see yep okay i pull up my bucket the uh, in the the one i got from the shop that can fill like an, a lake's worth of water okay and I put it on top where the like with its face like where it would meet the geyser if it erupted and i sit on the top and wait for it to erupt <laughs> <laughs> zip what are you what are you doing just hold on are you, are you sure that Just looks sec- kind of dangerous? We'll see. We'll see. Uh, you wait ten seconds, and then you feel some rumbling beneath your bucket. And this is kind of a smaller geyser, but still, it's got a lot of them have a lot of force. And you feel the bubbling, and then, and um. Yeah, it it doesn't lift into the air. It literally just it looks like nothing happened because it's all going in the bucket. <laughs> um <laughs> cuz this is a good bucket. You're just sitting there and all of a sudden you just hear like Psh, right. and it, it like sounds like he's going to the bathroom. I wait, it's just zippy sitting on I the wait bucket. literally I wait uh, 4 seconds and then I quickly turn the bucket right side up cuz I don't let any chance of the um guys are like falling out, out of the bucket. You flip it up, and you see it's kind of, it looks like a, a bucket full of water, but you know it could hold more than this, but just, it looks like it's full, but... That is a dangerous yeah. bucket. That's my bucket. All right, well, let's keep moving. <laughs> <laughs> Seth, would we have heard of this place uh, outside of, like, do we know what this place, like, oh, you've already said that we have no idea what this place is. Normandy make a history check. Who knows what the monk spoke of? Twenty-one. Okay, Norman. There was one day in the monk monastery when you were especially nosy in the library, mm-hmm. and you went into, you pulled a book and it led to a hidden, like section of the library. Oh, gee whiz! This um, is the coolest place ever. And there was some ancient history books in there. Uh, once you were found out, Master Matsumura scolded you and told you not to go back in there. But there was some uh, old books. But you smuggled one of them out. And it was an ancient history of the land. And specifically, it talks about this northern civilization that um, was very prosperous. And it was like way back, way back when the gods were still kind of roaming and just finishing up creating the world. Like there were still people like walking around. Um, and there was this northern area, which was, uh, just really nice people. They were known for being very magical and kind of twisting, uh, the ways of the world to their whim. Uh, and they had kind of a little civilization, but something came and destroyed it all overnight. Um, but 
this land um, was nameless because, you know, nowhere. It was basically like the Adam and Eve of this world were here. Um, and yeah, a nameless land. But once once prosperous and once blessed by the gods, but now abandoned. Would I know what the the Lapines of um, the Bramble Patch are saying about this place, considering it's so close? Yes. You would, uh, you would, you've probably heard just briefly, no history check required, that the Lapines, uh, the Bramble Scouts that kind of patrol the nearby area, they frequently go to the ruins in the north, but they never really come this way because they see it as just not worthwhile. Nothing ever goes here, and anything that goes here just kind of dies. Um, so they think of it as a dangerous land, and they never bother patrolling. I'm it. just imagining the um, Bramble Scouts is like the Attack on Titan. Like that's guys. exactly <laughs> what I thought. <laughs> they they kind of are. They have the cloaks, and they have this these weird things on their hip that lets them zip from place to place. But... Zippy. Anyway, huh? um, <laughs> hey, there you go. It's all it's all meant to be. Connected. But yeah, the, no, the the Bramble Scouts never come here. They do know more about the the ruins, and you've heard stories about that, but not not this area. Okay, I kind of as we're walking, and I kind of remember some of this. I kind of just say, "I believe I read of this place." Um, as far as I know, it used to be a great, bountiful place. Then something horrible happened here, and it's desolate now. It's it makes you wonder what it was. I only know that this place is useless to Lapines. No one ever wants to go near here. I mean. I guess it's not useless to all the peens, though. I mean, you got a lot of water for your bucket. Uh, <laughs> we have many water over in Bramble Patch. Yeah, Darian, many, many water. Many water. I love the grammar. <laughs> many water in Bramble many Patch. Many water. That's the name of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> Much water. Wow. Um, okay, do you guys want to keep going forward? or? Yeah, I just... But of course. I, I just want to... Ask Darian. I mean, am I allowed to ask him? Like Darian, you, your your background of the the Arch Fay. You know, did they, did they have, may not anything to do with this, but would they know of this place before it was as it is now? No, unfortunately not. Not not that they would really care to remember. The Fay is Feywild is very fairly isolated. After the gods abandoned us there, we created our own, the Archfey. We began to forget of the outside world. Very few know anything about it. Even my father and my aunts and uncles rarely, rarely talked uh, about anything in the Prime Plane. That's why I'm, I'm learning so much while I'm here. I, I don't think we'd have much knowledge. Well, I don't know anything about anything about these places. I just look around at the the geysers and I just man, oh, it just drives me crazy. I want to know what it was like back here. Okay, oh, sorry, sorry. Okay, whatever it was, it must have been some kind of catastrophe. I wonder what you know, really, what caused all these geysers. Mm. Well, we'll probably never know. <laughs> so let's keep walking and uh, adventure on. All right, agreed. Here we are. There's the cave, and you see uh, the mouth of a cave. Uh, and it just leads down, and uh, Kane just says, Yeah, he, he went in there. He couldn't have gone far. There's no way he could escape a cave like that. He just ran in there scared. Can can Pepper smell air on elementals? Can she kind of sniff this out? Pepper can <laughs> smell air elementals. Pepper is very in tune with perception and just mm. smells and noises. Uh the whole time, by the way, side note of what Pepper was doing while the whole ship thing was happening, it was just flying by the side. It wasn't actually on the ship. It was just flying on the side, like, <laughs> nearby. It was like, I'm not getting messed up with she that. She wore the only uh, seatbelt on the ship. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was just like, <laughs> and then just, like, sits there and laughs. And then, um, but yes, Pepper the Hawk Fox, currently on Darian's shoulder, uh, does know, uh, or could at least track mm-hmm. You know, an air elemental. I uh, I turn to Pepper and I, I, I give her a little treat um, for my supplies there. And uh, I look at her and go, okay, girl, can you uh, go and sniff him out like this? And I kind of like motion to the air elemental and like direct her inside and like, 
go, come on, let's go sniff them out. Its ears perk up and start kind of like rotating like like uh, antennas and like radio dials. And it's just like, doo, 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 doo. It's, like, it's, like it's like it's scanning. And then Pepper hops on the ground and starts sniffing along the floor and starts crawling into the cave. Kane says, okay, uh, bring, her, bring, bring him back soon. I'll be in the balloon. Okay, bye. Whoosh. Wait, uh, and they uh, whisk off. All right. Well, I was hoping we could try and use him to convince the brother. But I mean... Uh, it is what it is. Seems to be our luck today. You guys ready to go inside? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. You, Darian, lead the way. And I'll draw my bow. I'll draw my bow, my black bow, just in case. You guys walk into the cave. Darian, can you turn, like, yellow with, or red or some, something bright? I can't. It's so dark in here. Well, I don't, I don't glow, Zip. It just changes the tones of my skin and hair. Yeah, but certain light reacts off of certain surfaces better so you can see certain colors at night better. Even if the smallest bit of light, the light from our souls could shine bright on you. <laughs> that was very... Turn red, damn it! <laughs> you ought to piss him off to do that. I want to see something cool. You want to... What? I flick Darian in the ear. Ow! Or poke him in the butt since he's in front. <laughs> Stop it! Hold on! Give me a moment. Does it? Uh, well, truth be told, I can't. I can't turn red. You can't anymore. perform, eh? Under under pressure. Is that well, it? No, I can't turn red. That was kind of a weird, uh, messed up season. I. It was a. It was a representation of summer, but the true summer representation is more gold. So I can do that. Well, I mean, do it. Do okay. what you can, Darian. I mean. Yeah, do what you can, Darian. Uh, it's going to take, like, at least, like, 20 minutes. Oh, yeah, start the process. We'll keep walking, but start the process. Uh, okay. Wait, you're going to keep walking? Yeah, come on, let's keep going. I, I, I'll I, need to sit down and rest. Oh, forget it. We don't have time. Let's go. Yeah, forget it. This is yeah, boring I... now. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe another day, Zip, and I keep walking. Th- this was Normandy's idea, too. Don't play this on me. <laughs> Look, just let's just stop making this about my skin color. Let's just keep going. It's, yeah, that's it's so about what season you can 1. Do. Nice. Okay, let's keep going. <laughs> and you keep walking into the cave. And as you're walking, you start to feel the air is a little more refreshing. And the darkness isn't so dark anymore. And you see the cave actually stops this path you've been going on this kind of linear slightly curvy path um through this cave and then all of a sudden you meet a rock wall it it looks like it's just kind of caved in but pepper climbs to the top and kind of like digs out a few rocks and makes a little hole and some blue light shines through and pepper climbs through the hole the little hole at the top and goes to the other side of the wall what would you like to leave what would you like to do is the hole big enough that the three of us could each climb in through one at a time? No, it's a hawk fox mm, okay. size hole. Well, I turn, I turn into, I turn into a hawk fox then. <laughs> you could <laughs> dig the, yeah, sure. You turn into a hawk fox. It's just a lot of little rocks piled onto each other. I just want to make sure you have the full information before you keep going. Okay, you're a little hawk fox, and you go through the um, hole, and you see Pepper I on the other side. Climb to the top of the pile. Uh, and I go, Norman, come here for a second. Like, so I can see through the hole. Norman, come here. Okay. As long as we rely on your dexterity checks, because mine have been shit. <laughs> well, this will be fine. I slap Norman in the back, and, uh, I have a racial ability of face step that I can oh, trigger I thought you that, didn't want to bring race into it. As a spring Aladrin, I can choose to teleport somebody else. Um, so I teleport Norman, uh, on the other side. Uh, into the next room, and then I'll uh, just misty step behind him. Darian, what about you? No, Darian! Oh, uh, I'm, oh, I'm right oh, here. Oh, sorry, hi, hi, sorry, I got worked up there. Whew. You're on the other side, and all of you see the cave kind of path ends briefly after the the wall of rocks and the cave in, and you see just a little pool of water, and it's extremely clear and see through. And you can see that it kind of leads into this underwater cavern that goes forward and underneath the lip of this 
um, this wall. There's a little room for air, um, but like you can tell that you'd have to go in the water to move forward. But also around you, you see um, some skeletons, some people, like some skeletons that were buried under the rocks, and you see uh, a bag near the near the side of the pool of water. What do you think's in there? I'm not sure. Is anybody good at uh, detecting traps? Um, I do have that spell. Yes, I do. Uh, I don't know if we want to burn that much energy over a bag. I can sniff it. I'm a hawk fox. Oh yeah. <laughs> How are we talking right now? <laughs> oh, can I? Oh, you know what? I, I'll grab it with mage hand then. Okay, you grab the bag with mage hand and lift it up. It just seems like a normal bag, like a normal backpack, normal traveler's backpack. I bring. It. I jump onto it, and while he has it in the air. Yeah, Zippy, you claw onto it, and you just get dragged over with it. I scratch Woo! Zippy behind the ears. <laughs> hey, buddy. <laughs> get away from me. Oh, oh, sorry. I thought you were your Pepper. Oh, where is Pepper? I'm just trying to relate to Pepper in this new body, Pepper. you see. This isn't just getting through the holes. It's me trying to get, relate to our new companion, which all of you seem to ignore 24-7. Pepper. What's in the bag? Pepper is currently. Pepper Calm is uh, sniffing at the water, looking like you have to go in the water to proceed. Uh, and I'll do the same thing. <laughs> Pepper looks at you and gives that. <laughs> and normally, before you weren't able to understand Pepper, and even still, when you're in a hawk fox form, you can't understand Pepper for some reason. Good. I think <laughs> Good. the mystery, the the mystery, oh. kind of adds to the character. Yeah. It's like it's like Scooby Doo, where all it can say is "row row," <laughs> or Scooby Snacks or something. Um, anyways, the bag, Normandy, you have the bag, and you can feel there's a little weight in it. You open it up, and you see just some rope, some spoiled rations, uh, a map of the Western continent of Ohm, which you already kind of have. Uh, but on this map, you notice a lot of little red X's all over this northern part where the geysers are. Um. <laughs> and oh, you just see a lot of little red X's. Um, it's like a treasure map. And you also see... What? Or a don't go here <laughs> or a, map. Or a don't I'm go I'm going to put multiple X's on here to make sure no one goes here. <laughs> and also, a little bottle. And there's a label on it that tells you exactly what this thing is. It says it's the Baron's Muddy Water. Um, This what? potion, and you can write that down... Uh, this is a potion that allows your body to be freely edited like clay. Um, it's a it's a pale <laughs> cream colored liquid, um, but the potion that like the water inside it's thick like clay. But you like rub it on you, and and you eat it as well. So you rub it on your face and ingest it, and your body becomes clay like. Any creature can spend an action to edit the body. You can lengthen your limbs. You can sculpt new limbs. You can compress limbs. You can rip pieces off. You can virtually do anything you could with clay. Uh, and you can also um, uh, you can fit through gaps that are one inch wide or lo- or larger. Like you could thin yourself out. This lasts for ten minutes before you resume your normal non clay like state. And uh, yeah, and all the changes you make like I save say... while you're doing it. But um, also, but they save or they go back. They go back after the time. You'll you'll it's it's okay. not like you you can make a million limbs and then you have them at the end. I say we use this as a group punishment so that we, if someone screws up or does something really stupid, we we make them look like something real phallic. <laughs> <laughs> and they have to be that for 10 minutes, and that's your punishment. And they have to run through a public place. Damn, there you go. Um, <laughs> or just suffer in silence. Some other stuff it can do is... Uh, if you are near a clay source, you can increase your size. And if you are hit by water or fire, your size goes down. Uh, and you're vulnerable to uh, all you're, like you're vulnerable to all damage while you're in this. It's not like you're invulnerable. Uh, but make a history check, everybody. <laughs> That's uh, 13 minus 1 for a 12. 8. It's a 9. Okay. Um, all you know, Darien, which is from picking it up in your travels in Orem when you were briefly there, is that the Baron is a famous dragonborn uh, sculptor uh, who just is a free spirit and traverses the lands of Ohm, uh, and they sculpt things. And they were actually the one who sculpted your statue in Orem, the one of you guys and Colm in the center of Orem, the golden statue. 
um, the Baron did that work while you were away for the months in the cube. Um, oh, cool. But yeah, so this is somehow related to him. Um, but I don't know that. Oh, exciting. Uh, Darian if you don't know that. that. Man, I wonder who the Baron was. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Gee. Yeah, no I idea. Wish anyway. Tell me. <laughs> uh, the skeletons. Yeah. Um, how many are there? There's two. There's one that's you can only see the hand of, the rest is crushed by the the body uh there. And or sorry, the all you can see is a hand, the body is crushed by the rocks. Uh and the other one is just half crushed by the rocks. Um, but they were just wearing like commoner clothes. I search through their bones. Uh, you find more bones. I take one of the bones. You have a bone. All right. <laughs> Wait, you search through the bones and find more bones. Specifically, They're multiplying. You have um, a, a piece of a rib cage. Soon I'll be able to build a, ri- a full skelly man. Because remember, I got one of the the bones from the other guy in the cave, like. that's terrible (laughs) (laughs) you have a little collection of bones soon one of these times a dm will make one of these bones magical (laughs) and you're getting a bone (laughs) dagger from um reward my curiosity surely you're getting a bone dagger weapon (laughs) that that darian is paying for if i decide to give it to him but that's internal all right yeah well maybe i can you know like melt all these bones down to create a better weapon. Who knows? Yeah, Darian, can you um, tell how old these bones are? Uh, old as fuck. Um, okay, let's see. No, I don't know. I can I can I make a medicine investigation check. check. <laughs> but I have a still a minus one, so uh, it's a uh, nineteen down to an eighteen. Though. Dem bones are old. Um, these are some <laughs> old bones. You can tell just by how decayed they are. They're almost dust. This is an incomprehensible amount of time. Um, but the one I grabbed is pretty sturdy. No, it's pretty gross. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it'll work yeah. for the collection to make a skelly man when the time comes. Um, <laughs> okay. It'll, it'll serve its purpose. I was going to say, okay, I'm going to walk over to the pool and uh, start investigating where Pepper was sniffing before. Now that we've, you know, wasted time on a bunch of bones. You guys have been making a lot of noise and you're looking into the pool water Darian you bend over the side and Pepper starts to growl at the water and you I put on my cap of water breathing okay you slap on the swimmer's cap <laughs> it doesn't look attractive but it works um, <laughs> and you just hear this echoing evil laughter coming from the pool it's like Mwah! <laughs> Ooh, whoa, whoa, a little bug has flown to my world. And a little moxie fish <laughs> swims through the water and pops up at the surface. And a moxie fish is a curvaceous, soft pink fish which with ha- that has like cherub cheeks with puffy lips and a pompadour like fin. Uh, and... Uh, if you cook, specifically also for your knowledge, if you cook these, it bestows you with a plus one enchantment bonus to charisma for 1d4 hours if you if you cook this fish and eat it. But uh, this fish is talking in a human voice. It's this little pink fish. And it just looks at all you and it's like, oh, guests. Fantastic. Um, I'm going to try and <laughs> grab the fish with my hand. Let me roll. Ah, let go. Ah, you, ah. And he's like out of the water, and you have this fish in your hand. It's like, put me in! Stop! Stop! We're looking, we're looking for an air elemental. Have you seen yes! it? Yes! Put me in the water! I have it in the water, but I'm still holding it. Oh, you are the devil itself! You evil man! I pick him back up. <laughs> I'm st- that's still. I'm still looking for an air elemental. Uh, so uh, let's try again. And I put him back in the water. Do you know who I am? Okay. I, I pick him back uh, up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is the look. The, we're gonna do this one more time. Um, and I need you to tell me where this air elemental is, or there's a good chance I'm gonna eat you because I heard you can raise my charisma. No, so no, no, let's try no, this again. I put him back in. No. Ah. Yes, I've seen it! Oh, my God! 
Yes! Yes! Oh! Damn! Yes, I've seen an air elemental. It went that way. My god. Oh. You are messing with the wrong fish. All right, fine. I'll humor you. What's your name? Oh, yes, good. I was hoping we'd get to introductions. That's my favorite part. All right. My name is, and I'm sure you came here just to see me, not the air elemental, but my name is Draken Gragas, the most evil sorcerer in the world, the destroyer of these lands. I have lived for a millennia, and now I'm a fish. And why are you a fish now? Uh, I wanted to be one. I have a sinking suspicion that that's not true. What? No. How could... <laughs> oh, Damn. I, guys. Oh, I don't get many visitors. I practice this. T no, it's real. I was, pra past tense, a great sorcerer. And evil. And I destroyed the lands and murdered thousands. If that's true, what was this place called before it was destroyed? Oh, it was called Wesnia. It used to be this lush place. But the god Orella gave me power, and I destroyed it with magic and lit it all on fire. Isn't that crazy? Um, I'm going to grab a, uh, an empty bottle, and I'm going to put him in there, like, scoop some water in it, and then I'm going to put him in and then put a cork on it. No, 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 no. <laughs> and he's going to try and... He evades. No, 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 no. I didn't become a fish just to be trapped, even though you could say that this cave and this little pool of water is not as room... I need to get out, actually. <laughs> Hold on. How, how much water do you think is in this whole cave system? Me? <sighs> yeah. I don't if, you know. had to, if you had to ballpark, how much would you say? Like, maybe in my area that I'm allowed to access because I'm a fish, um, like two swimming pools, max. Awesome. Zip, can I borrow your bucket? No, it's my bucket, and I'm playing with Pepper right now. Can I Can I please just for a second? I'll give it right back, I promise. How would I possibly give it to you? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fox. Oh, good point. I still don't know how we're talking. <laughs> uh. So unless Zip, can you, you turn back to, so I can... unless you want me to admit that I wasted this transformation spell, then and then I'd have to give you the bucket. And so if you think Zip, can... I'm willing to admit that you're wrong, because I have to play this out until something shows from the spell being used. Zip, can you please just turn back into you? <laughs> I want this to mean something, Darian. <laughs> <laughs> it did. You got through the hole in the pile Everyone of Everyone got through the hole. Yeah. I scratch it behind the ears again. I say, oh, come on, Zippy. What do you say? This is my bucket. I get to use it. If I'm the one. I don't you... use your stuff. No, by all means, you can use it. But I don't know if I want to drain the, the fish's lake. Zip, what? <laughs> Why are you making this so difficult, please? He already. He's already our friend. You're our friend, right? <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> For sure Alright, oh, fine uh, I'll be I'll be Zippy Westboro again I'll undo the spell <laughs> DM, I'll undo the spell You undo the spell? <laughs> You're back to Zippy Pepper's a little sad <sighs> I pull out the bucket and slowly walk towards the the edge of the little wa the water. What are you doing? No. <laughs> I'm not going in that bucket. I won't go in a bottle. I'm not going in a bucket. I'm not going anywhere. I'm I don't think he'd go in the bucket, right? It's just the water. What do you mean? What? No. I d it's the principle I'm, of the thing. I'm asking the DM. Like, I don't <laughs> think he'd go in the, in, the, in the bucket, right? Will he go? No, uh, because it's just water, right? Yeah, That's it only fills the... with water. It's gonna look. Re I don't know what's gonna happen. Okay, I sl I slowly, I slowly start like d descending the bucket slowly into the water and seeing what don't, happens. Don't do this it. This is a whole new territory. I don't know what's gonna happen. Stop! <laughs> Stop it! Don't. 
and you slowly dip it in. It's slowly starting to fill in very fast. And he's like, no, 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 no. And he's trying to swim away, this little pink fish. He's like, no, stop, stop. And then he, like, puts water in his mouth. And he makes his cheeks go wide. And he spits the water in your face, Zippy. No, I, I accidentally dropped the bucket in the in the. <laughs> he startles me, and I drop the bucket in the like, in the water. No, no! And it's like a toilet bowl, <laughs> and he's like he's getting flushed, uh, and all the water goes into the bucket up to the up to the brim. But there's still like some water that would go up to like your ankles on the bottom, and he is floating on the top of the bucket. <laughs> hey. it's like foiled you've you think you've captured me i will rip you limb from limb now i pick him up and put him in the bottle ah! oh damn it um, does this thing have some sort of like tupperware like thing i can put on top of it the bucket so no the water doesn't splash all over the place but guess what he spat water in your face zippy and i'm gonna roll a d100 real quick Oh no! <gasps> what? <laughs> oh wow! Your eyes light up, Zippy. It's like light is just shining from them. It's like somebody replaced your eyeballs with flashlights, and you open your mouth, and it's just like a beam of light. Darren, um, you <laughs> said you you needed twenty minutes to turn this color. <laughs> <laughs> you turn to Darian, and Darian, you look at Zippy while he's talking at you, and the light. The light blinds you. <laughs> oh, oh, <God. laughs> Zippy's just screaming with his mouth open, like circling the cave, and it's like a spotlight is just going around the room, this huge beam of light from his <laughs> mouth. What the what the hell? He's a human lighthouse now. <laughs> I love my What's life. happening? I d- oh my gosh, I don't know. Cl- please close your mouth. I don't know. I have to close my eyes, too, then. Oh, good point. How long... Excuse me, Mr. Fish, how long does this last again? Oh, who knows? A lifetime, perhaps! I say, what? And uh, I, like, put my mouth right beside his face and say, what? <laughs> 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 ah! <laughs> ah! My eyes! I'm a fish! My eyes are even more sensitive to light! Damn it! Ah! Like ten minutes, maybe! <laughs> Oh, all right. That's not too bad. You devil! I, I am. I must cover my eyes shamefully. Zippy, maybe you should lead the way. How can I? I can't. I. I feel like it's too bright for even me to see. Right? Um. You. Well, you can see with your eyes, but like the beam of light from your mouth. Like, there's no beams coming from your eyes. It's only mainly from your mouth. Your eyes are just lit up. Um, but yeah, you wouldn't be able to see oh. through the beam as well, Zippy. But we can all see. We all have dark vision. <laughs> I don't know why I have <laughs> yeah, to be in the front. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. Well, let's um, let's just start making our way through then. Zippy you might just need to be quiet just for a few minutes. I'm sorry. While we're uh, hiking through this tunnel, though, Mr. Fish, can you explain to me why you're here? Call me Draken Dragest, Sorcerer Supreme. And yes, I'll tell you. I'll stick with Mr. Fish. Uh, Fine. I was a grand sorcerer. Blessed with powers from Aurella, goddess of the elves. And I came to this plane to wreak havoc and destroy. Not on her orders, just on my own initiative, because I'm evil. She didn't know that, though. So I destroyed the land of Wesnia, the land so beloved by the gods. And I turned it to ash. And, uh, and then when I was done, I was kind of bored. And I, you know, when you you think you can, you think you can thing. Yeah, I was like, what if I became a fish? I just wanted that life. And I became a fish. And it was that easy. Um, quick, quick question for the DM, for Darian. Just to clarify, is is Orella the same god that created the Eladrin? Yes. Okay, just I just wanted to make sure. Um so I turned to him. Wait, you you communicated directly with Orella? It was a long time ago, but we were homies. How how long ago? Like uh oof, I don't know. You lose track. When when the world was created, I guess. 
I was one of the first Eladrin created. A winter court Eladrin, actually. And um, Can I make a history check to see if I, I recall this name now? Yeah, go for it. Uh, nope, it didn't go anywhere. No, you don't <laughs> recognize the name, but you know the name now because he said it repeatedly. Um, so yeah, you don't recognize it. But he says, yeah. But yeah, anyways, she, she blessed me with magical powers. And, uh, and I use them for evil. Whoop hoo Whoops. My bad. Not sorry. Sorry. Is that how you say that? So I create like a little spark of fire in my hand. And I bring it towards, and I put it underneath the bottle of water. Okay. And I say, it really irks me how you joyfully destroyed a civilization that was so lush and plentiful. And I just kind of let the fire cook the water for a bit. Well, sorry, I, I did it. I did it for me, not for you. Everybody has their own vices, I suppose. And you know, one of my pastimes is just murder and destruction, and it was fun. But being a fish is also quite fun, actually. Now that I think about it, <laughs> you know, I like this life. You know, I miss the magical powers. By the way, that's what the water is. When I became a fish, all my magical energy had to go somewhere, so it just kind of went into the surrounding area. Um, so that's why everything's kind of, you know, maybe magically radiated, I suppose. So are you saying that all that water we just put into Zippy's bucket is full of magical power? Yeah. Dear God, what have we done? I stopped the flame. So, <laughs> really? But, you know, I don't know how far it goes. It could go way down into this. I don't know. This might be a dungeon. I, I, I couldn't have explored past the, the little pool here. I've had guesses. And I think maybe dungeon. <laughs> well, look, if you're really an Eladrin criminal, as you say, I'll be heading back there eventually. And uh, you should probably receive some punishment for that. So I think you're going to be joining us for the next little while. No! Punishment? <laughs> Me? Draken is the one who punishes. I am the one who kills. I am the sorcerer guy. What are you talking about? Uh, right now, it kind of looks like you're just a fish. And I yes, I am a very beautiful way. fish. Look at me. <laughs> all right, I. All right. Well, I kind of like pop him in my uh, my belt of kind of like stuff, and I just have him kind of popped in there right now. I go, you're just gonna stay here with me, and I uh, jump kind of down into that area that we filled the water from and start making my way through. You guys coming? Yep, following you. And I and I pull my bow out again. You guys hop down, and Zippy, you're carrying the bucket. I can't see anything. Open your eyes, Zip. I thought you guys would laugh at that. You know, you laughed at it the first time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now I have to do it again. No, do it. I promise I won't laugh. I promise. Do it. Open the eyes. Open those peepers. <laughs> <laughs> what are your guys' names again? Zippy! <laughs> Hello there! My name is Normandy. Uh, my name is Zippy Westboro. I'm from the Bramble Patch, and these are my friends. They don't know my life previous to these past little month and a bit, but... I'll tell you a bit about myself. My, I, I grew up, I grew up in a, uh, the Bramble Patch and in a little dirt hole. If I get um, out of this jar, I am burning the Bramble Patch to the ground. My story gets more elaborate the more I try to think about it and I tell this story. And so I'm really excited to where this these next five minutes are going to go. So, Darian. Uh, so, <laughs> Darian, I know that's your name now. You don't have to tell me. <laughs> yes, I'm Darian Branch. From the Feywild myself, actually, so I'm a little disappointed to see some monster from the Winter Court. Like oh, come that. on! We're like brothers. We're like, we're like <laughs> closer than brothers now. A boy and his fish. I like the sound of it. <laughs> <laughs> we're nothing like brothers, I can assure you of oh, that. Oh, come on. You probably have the urge, don't you? Feel a little itch in your loins? The itch for destruction? Uh, Is that why I see you keep quite. tightening your glutes there, Darian? It's oh, it's most itch. definitely why. <laughs> Normandy's eye twitches when he says that. The itch. <laughs> uh, the, look, I just I have a, get a little muscle spasm in my glutes, and sometimes they just kind of do this thing. <laughs> you can like, say your butt, Darian. You don't have to say glutes. Yeah, my my 
Say it. My, my rear end. Say the butt word. My, the, my tuchus. <laughs> Say uh, it. Butt th- word. All right. It's my, my butt. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> you're such a freak. Oh, what an animal. So you're like right, Darian stuff, just eh? keeps walking. <laughs> you know, you guys think I'm bad. This guy just used basically the worst swear word that a Lodron could use. <laughs> but. Um, you guys keep walking. I'll introduce now. And you get to the other end of this short, just like dip in the water. And you climb up the wall and get back on the surface, which is basically leads to another path of the cave. And kind of leads into a bit more of an open area. And you see it's like these two a doorway, a two door doorway, but it's kind of tilted on its side. It's like a house was like toppled over sideways, and this was the door to lead into it. Um and yeah, what do you want to do? Uh Pepper seems to be sniffing at the door, thinking the air elemental went that way. All right, go All right, um We gotta open the door. Open it. Who do you want to open it? Anyone. I think fate's telling us to open it, though. I use thaumaturgy to open it. I just ca- I call Pepper back first. Okay. Pepper returns and lands on your shoulder. Look at you, animal man! Jeez, Doctor Doolittle over here collecting animals. First a hawk fox, now a fish. All right, What's okay, next? I I'm really not liking your vibe anymore. Just shut up. Um, okay, let's open. <laughs> Never. Let's open this door. You dare tell me <laughs> to to shut up after your whole bramble patch speech? My. God, you idiot! Does you know what? I have saran wrap to like cover this bowl I, I take of water the, and not a fish. I take the saran bottle and I, and I press wrap? it into my cloak. <laughs> it, uh, it's on. It's on my hilt. I I, oh, okay, I would like to mind. grab it. I'm. I've got a better one. I uh, toss it in the bag of holding. Okay. You regret this. <laughs> Wait, the fish, not my bucket. You can't hold on to my bucket. I I know. I put the, the fish in, in a little vial there. there. Oh right, 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 right. And I just threw the bottle into a. Uh, uh, into the bag yeah, of holding. Yeah, he was getting so. right annoying. Yeah, maybe we can try again a little bit later. You close the bag and you cannot hear Draken Gragas's voice anymore. Um, what would you like to do? Open Thaumaturgy, the open the door. Thaumaturgy, doors kick open and you feel some rushing wind come out and you sense that you're on the trail of this air elemental that escaped into this dungeon. Next time. Next time is Dungeon Crawl. Cheaper by the Dungeon. That's why we do this. Dungeon Crawl. Next episode. Get pumped. And that's where we're going to end.